buddy. All right, welcome back, everybody. This is Lester Bay Basketball. On the channel, we celebrate basketball culture and everyone who contributed to it. Today, I got my co-host, Asad Muhammad. We have a special guest, a PHS legend, Andre Spite. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. Thanks Pretty for good. having me on. Thank you yeah. for your time. Yeah. Nothing but time, man. Nothing but time out here. True. Sure. So Andre, what like who influenced you to play basketball, and what age do you start to take basketball seriously? Um, when I was when I was little, uh, I was basically just the ball was put in my hands when I was pretty much as long as I can remember. Uh, my mom and dad both put the ball in my hands, and uh, the only person who influenced me to really like love basketball was Kobe Bryant. I mean, it was first of course Allen Iverson, then it was Trace McGrady, and then I ascended to Kobe, but. Those three guys right there is pretty much where I really ascended to love the game. And it was just me and myself, uh, only child growing up. Mom and dad didn't push me to play basketball. I mean, they 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 put the ball in my hands, but I played every other sport too. So mm -hmm. it was honestly, it was just, just me and myself, like, and just the love for the game. Well, let's go over your career in chronological order. Um... I see that you played at uh, PHS, like me and Assad. Um, did you play anywhere before that? Like, uh, I know as the thing you said, you're from Burbank, right? Yeah, I am from Burbank, California. Uh, that's that's the first. I went to Burbank for three years, and then I transferred to Pasadena my senior year. Okay, what led to that transfer? It was just a a better opportunity at PHS, or? Yeah, definitely. Because at Burbank High, I mean, I don't. If you could tell me the last guy that's came out of there really went to college like it's really tough to come out there come out of there it's really tough mm -hmm. i'm sure some i'm sure there's some guys but it, it's it's hard i wasn't getting the exposure i needed that i felt like i needed to make it to the next level so i did have to make that move and it ended up paying dividends true that true oh. that Go ahead do you know who, oh do you know who ajon everson is yeah yeah i know ajon uh, i actually played with ajon uh we had a team called slam squad our aau team Back mm -hmm. in the day, well before BHS. So yeah, I've known Ajon a while. Yeah, that's my that's like my big bro. So yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, he's he's tough, man. He's a talented player. Mm -hmm. He always had, to, always was tough. So were you on that team with Blake Hamilton as well? No, I wasn't. I wasn't oh. on that team. I joined. I think the year after when he had graduated. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So it says so, right here. My bad. So I go ahead. <laughs> oh, see. Kind of talk about like your AU um, process throughout high school like the ups and downs the AAU one yeah a, like talk about your AAU team and you like did you get the proper exposure that you needed to yeah I did AAU was a was a circus man like as you guys know AAU is a circus so I played for team LAX I can all-stars uh double pump teams uh what I played for so many AAU teams but those three right there in particular is where I really got some good exposure and uh, mainly where I got my scholarship was in was in high school at Pasadena. And that's where it really where it took a turn for me. It was it was a uh, right right in high school I got a scholarship to UTEP. And then when I went to UTEP, I was there for about a month and then I found out that one of my classes got flagged. So cause all well, the reason I transferred from Burbank to Pasadena is because my grades weren't up to par correlating with division one classes that I was needing to take to be eligible for division one. I was just taking classes to graduate, not necessarily to be eligible for division one. So when what I went that, to Pasadena, I was- What does that um, mean though? I know a lot of people looking at this now doesn't really know what that means. Um, can you explain more? No, uh, I mean, at the time I didn't even know what it means. And and still it's, it's, a, it's I was missing a math class. And oh, my, okay. I, yeah, so. And when I went to PHS, I was making up, making up, making up for all that, for all those classes. And then it was when I got to UTEP, I was flagged for one class and uh, I could have propped over there, Prop 48, which means I can uh, sit out the year and uh, make up, make up for those classes. But I decided to go ju JUCO. I went to number one JUCO in, uh, in America, honestly, at South Plains. So we were really good over there. And when I when I didn't get qualified for UTEP, it was real sad. Like, I know mm -hmm. I know my mother was crying. I know my family was down. I, I feel like I let myself down, my friends, my family, because everyone's like, "Oh, Jay's going D one. Jay's going D one." 
And it didn't happen that way. And when I went to, I promised my mom, I said, don't worry, mom. Like, I know I'm not going D1 right now, but when I go JUCO, I'm going to do these two years and I'm going to earn myself another scholarship. And since then, I earned myself about 30 to 50 scholarships coming out of South Plains and ended up choosing Arizona State after that. I'm at right now. So, um, yeah, ha had to, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's a long route, though. I'm not gonna lie. That's tough. Oh man, that's that's a long route, and that and it didn't even end there. I just stopped mm. it right there at ASU, but because I'm sure the the next questions will lead up to that. So, but um, yes. I seen in high school you put up 24 points a game. Does it does it scoring come easy to you? Really? Like I know other people they just have to they have to be in a system, but it seems like with every school you yeah. played at, you're always like one of them leading scorers on the team. Yeah, definitely scoring. That's that's my that's my thing. Cause you know I said Allen Iverson, Trace McGrady, and Kobe mm -hmm. Bryant. Those are the three guys that I emulated my game after. So mm -hmm. those guys right there is like killer scores. So yeah, I'm sure you see the Allen Iverson. I see the Iverson in the highlights. Yeah, that's my dude. That right to left. That's yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's that right to left. It, it's unguardable. Cause mm -hmm. they think you're gonna go to the basket, but yeah. You got to decide. All right. So kind of talk about your time at Arizona State. You know, I, I know, like, it's like one of the best. It's a Pac-12 school. So I know you're playing against lots of, you know, players that end up going pro and NBA. So kind of talk about your experience at Arizona State. I will. I, I never said this publicly. I've always said this to people privately. But, you know, I'm, I'm at the stage now where mm -hmm. I can pretty much say what I want. So, I, you know, oh, yeah, when, I was, when I was in college, exactly. When I was in college, I really was a little bit silent with this, but I'm gonna go ahead and just say it now. Like my biggest regret was probably not signing to Oregon when I had the chance, when I had the opportunity, because when I signed to Arizona State out of JUCO, I assigned to the coach Herb Sendek, the same coach that coach James Harden. Mm -hmm. And not, I'm not saying I'm James Harden. I'm just, I'm just saying that's the mm -hmm. same, that's the same coach, coach James Harden. And he saw, he saw a lot of scoring ability in me and wanted me to rock with the ball. So I ended up signing to him, went on a visit, signed there, loved it. And as like a month or two later, when I was still in Juco after I signed, he got fired. Ooh. And I was like, damn, like he got, yeah, it's not yeah. good. I'm like, damn, he got fired. The coach, the coach I wanted to play for got fired. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people were asking me like, and coaches were asking me and saying, um, and, it was a whole bunch, it was a recruiting process all over again. Cause mm -hmm. if your coach gets fired, you can pretty much open up your recruitment again. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I mean, just like you guys, if you guys went to a visit to Arizona State, man, like you're gonna stay loyal to them and you're gonna wanna still go there. So I was like, man, I'm good. Like, I'm, you know, whoever the coach, whoever the new coach is, like, I'm a, he's gonna like me, I'm gonna like him. We're gonna, I'm gonna do my thing over there. Mm -hmm. And like I went to when I went to go visit, I'm like, yeah, this is it right here. I don't want to go to no other school. Like Arizona State's popping, like it's popping. Oh yeah, here's the poppin'. weather. Yeah, like it's. <laughs> I, I I literally I can't go nowhere else but there. Like that's I have my mind set. I'm going there. Mm -hmm. So I had Lou. I even had uh, schools as big as Louisville recruiting me after he had got fired. But I was like, no, nah, I don't want to go to Louisville. You know, I don't want to go that high. But I want to go to like a like Pac-12 school. Like it's a scoring mm -hmm. league. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, Oregon was was really asking me, was adamant about me signing there. And I just kept turning it down. And I said, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm going to go to ASU. And Bobby Hurley ended up being the coach there. Right. So, and Bobby Hurley was the coach. He was a good coach. He let people rock out and stuff like that. But he had put me in the corner, just like playing me strictly as a shooter. And that's that's really not my game. And yeah, I, see I, I felt like... Yeah, exactly. I, I need the ball in my hands to, you know, be able to create. And, you know, I'm not going to say nothing else more after that, but yeah, I, wouldn't I do felt that. like I definitely yeah. should have been, definitely felt like I should have been playing more than I have with the guys in front of me. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I had to make that transition to Northern Colorado. That's why I transferred the year after that and definitely put myself on the map and ascended my game in a way that I wouldn't be able to at ASU under him. So I'm mm -hmm. glad I made that move. Your Northern Colorado coach, he was scouting you out from uh, Boise State, right? When he was an assistant coach? Yes, exactly. Yeah. He was. Yeah, so he scouted me at a JUCO, at a JUCO camp oh, okay. at, to Boise State. And I was like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm going to go to ASU. Mm -hmm. And the ASU didn't work out and he rolled right back around. So I was like, let's get it. Okay. 
All right, so um, you broke some records at North Carolina, uh, North Colorado too. Um, you had like forty-one points in the game one day. Yeah, yeah, I had a couple of those. I had a couple of those. And it says you broke like a a season record too, eight hundred fifty-five points in a single season. Yeah, that's that was, tough. That was a great. Uh, that that was a fun season for me, man. I only had one season there. I wish I had more, but mm -hmm. I only had one season, so I had to really max out over there. I heard that. So then after that, um, I'm sorry. Let's talk about your FIBA, your FIBA experience too. How was that? Uh, the, uh, the FIBA experience was cool. That was in 2016. 2016. This was right after, right, yeah, right after I left ASU when I mm. when I decided to si to sign to Northern Colorado, and. Mm -hmm. I believe, if I remember right, was I signed to Northern Colorado before I went to Armenia? Uh, it's funny that you said it, because I'm wearing this. This is actually where I got it I from. Know. Right That's why I seen it right there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it, it was right after I signed to Northern Colorado, I went to Armenia to play in the small country Olympics. That was the first time Armenia has ever assembled a team. You know, me being half Armenian, half black, I was yeah. eligible to play for that and ended up getting my passport over there, which also helps me overseas. So. It was just a great situation and we ended up winning the whole thing. Like we played against Ireland, Andorra, uh, some other countries too that I forget, but we ended up winning that that whole thing and it, it was a great experience, man. Man, that's dope. How was, how was it playing with those players? Can you speak like a little bit like Armenian? Is that the language for it? I'm sorry, my bad. Um, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it is. But uh, they were, they were more Russian Armenian. They, Russian. they okay. honestly, yeah, I, I was more Armenian than they were. Like, uh, like I was, I, my, my, I can speak well and understand like more than they could, honestly, because they weren't even from there. They were from like they were Russian Armenians, and they we only had like two or three Armenians from L.A. So, oh, I got you. But exactly, but I mean, it's not it's nothing that I'm not accustomed to, especially being out here overseas. Last year, I was in France over mm -hmm. here spain so the practices are in spanish so it's real tough mm -hmm. they got a translator for you over there or you just go yeah with one, one one uh, a little bit of both man it's one of the you. players translates it but it's a little bit of both i got to learn the plays in spanish i just got here so mm -hmm. <laughs> it's tough it's tough so after uh northern colorado you had an nba pro day how was that experience for you that was that was real fun, man. That was a, a dream come true, honestly. Um, I, coming from Burbank, California, there's it's you coming from Burbank, California, man. You don't really get those opportunities to even go D one, Division one, or even to even go college, JUCO, D two, um, NAIA. People don't really get that opportunity coming out of there. So just for me to just put on for the city and put on for myself, my friends, and my family. And uh, the younger generation below me was just, it was just real fun and it was a great experience. And I, and I can't wait to get back to the summer league. You know, I still, still in ascending, still, uh, you know, blossoming into, into my full potential and just looking forward to getting back to that. Uh, I can't do a pro day again. You only get, it's only one time when you uh, enter the draft. Gotcha. A lot of people say, Dre, you get, you going in the draft again? You're going to, I'm like, man, you only have one opportunity to get drafted. If not, you get signed. So, uh, okay. Uh -huh. A lot of people, cause I mean, that would be crazy. Imagine you sitting at home every year, like, I hope I get drafted. I hope I get <laughs> yeah. drafted. And it's like, that's torture. Like mm -hmm. you get where right. you get your one class to get drafted. And if not, you still, you, you still can make that push and get signed and do mm -hmm. well in your overseas, uh, overseas, uh, teams just so you can get back to that, you know, get your stats and get back to that summer league in order to get signed. What was your experience like playing for the Nuggets summer league team? I was like with the coaches and players. It was great, man. It was great. Right. It was, um, yeah, it was great. It's much different than college. You know, you're more, you're held more accountable for yourself. Uh, in college, they kind of take care of you and they're coaching you a lot more through everything. But over here, there's, you, you know, you, you go to practice, you do your workouts. And after that, you, you go home and just like, you know, as any pro, you got to get it on your own you get, get your extra work in on your own and, it was it was real fun, man. Going in the summer league in Vegas, seeing all the players, seeing just up close, visualizing it, playing against those guys. Mm -hmm. It was real great. I didn't get the opportunity I wanted with the playing time that I was selected with, but when I got in there, man, I, I had to give me a quick six points in ninety seconds. So yeah, I'm just looking forward to get 
Yeah, it is what it is, man. I, mm -hmm. I got 90 seconds and made the most of it, but I know if I get in there for about 20 minutes a game, 15 minutes a game, I'm gonna make some noise and mm -hmm. like they go remember the name once that once I get that opportunity. So after that, what? my bad, Asai, go ahead. Who's on a Denver Nuggets team on that summer league team? Like I know some rookies, like he was on that team. Uh, like, there, it was Monte Morris and Malik Be Beasley. Those cool. they weren't rookies at the time, so they were already in the NBA. So they were getting majority of minutes. Uh, my boy Devon was on there. Uh, who else was on there? Uh, Kenrich Williams. Also, my boy. He, uh, we went to JUCO back in the day. Uh, oh. We're not on the same team, but yeah, it, it was a couple of dudes on there. Uh, my Hayden Dalton from Wyoming, and. Uh, you know, before Victor Sanders from Idaho, he was in my conference too. So, you know, before the uh, whole summer league even started there, I came up to me and told me like, yo, Jay, you're not gonna get a lot of minutes uh, this summer league, you know, we're, we're trying, we're focusing on so-and-so. So I already knew what, coming in what it was. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it, it wasn't too hard for me to, you know, sit on the bench and cheer for my team, knowing that I wasn't gonna get in. So. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I wasn't sitting there like, I hope I get in, hope I get in. I kind of knew what it was before Politics. I got in there. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't, you can't be politics, man. Nah. I, <laughs> I got to sit to that, man. You can't. But oh, after that, you went to go play overseas. How was that experience in general? Like, I know I have a lot of friends that want to go play overseas. They're in JUCO right now. How do you even get over there? How do you get in contact with those coaches, organizations? Oh, man, I can, I can really go like three hours on, on overseas. But what I'm gonna say is uh, the, how you get in contact with those coaches, you just really, so what I would say for your for your friends in JUCO, they just got a ball out over there, mm -hmm. then transfer into a, D, a D1, a D2, whatever they can get into, ball out over there. And they have to get an agent to approach them like after their college season is done. That That's the, that's the best way that they're gonna get an opportunity is to have the agent approach them and kind of tell them like, yo, like, you know, like I want you to sign with our agency. And once you sign with the agency, then you have your pro day, then you have your shot and then they start reaching out to teams because the agents are the ones that know these coaches overseas, know these organizations throughout the year. So they're the ones that are ultimately gonna put you in position. The, the Facebook agents, you know, the ones that hit you on Facebook and stuff like that, like, yeah, that's cool, but Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, like, you know, we all got to get our money. So like those Facebook agents, like I would, I would try to just like be careful with those and, you know, be selective with those. Gotcha. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. I needed that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's always good though. Like I, I, even, even I was talking, talking to them, you know, you just gotta, you know, you can never skip an opportunity, always answer, always just, you know, fill them out. But once they start, once they start kind of, you, you, you'll realize it too when when uh, when it happens when they're talking to you because they'll make you fly out like if you got to fly out on your own and like it, it, you know it's it's grimy it's a grimy business it's a real tricky business with that so mm -hmm. if if you just need an agent to kind of put you in the right positions and because because they know the game. So do you All think? Right. My bad, so I go ahead. I right, was next one. Love it. All right, so do you think overseas basketball is going to be as big as the NBA in the future? Can we start to watch more and more overseas games in the U.S. now? Do you think it's going to be like the next big thing? Yeah, I do. I definitely do think it's going to. I feel like it already is uh, the next big thing because the, the NBA is the NBA, but there's mm -hmm. so many leagues and so many places overseas. Like there's in the French league, there's three leagues. In the Spanish league, there's three leagues. You know, there's so many leagues and so, in so many countries that, you know, players have opportunities. Americans have opportunities to go to. And there's the Euro League and then there's Euro Cup and then the Champions League. And it's, it's so many leagues as well. And not even just in Europe. In Australia, there's the NBL, which is great. In China, it's the CBA, which is great. Um, I mean, I can go on and on. There's so many leagues and so many, so many countries and so many places that can you can make a lot of chip out there. So I definitely and and teams in the NBA, you know, like right now, I'm I'm over here doing doing my thing to try to get back to the states, to try to get back to the G League, get back to the NBA scene, you know, so mm -hmm. I can be put on notice. So 
I mean, they always got their eye out. So you just got to kind of put in work over here and just hope for the best and just put your head, hat hard on and just put your head down and work. And, it's, you know, honestly, like anything is possible. That is true. Anything is because they see you, man. They see you. No matter where you at, they're going to see you. They're going to feel you. They're always watching. That's true. You yeah. got to decide. So speaking of the NBA, what teams do you think, like, what team do you think is going to win a championship? Like, who are you looking at? This year, what? I just got done watching the last dance right now for the second time, too. I just got done with episode nine. So, like, I was just chilling in my Nova text right now, watching watching MJ. I was just like, man, like, I was really starstruck just again watching that. But anyways, uh, I got the Lakers coming out again. Oh, man. Yeah, yes, I got the Lakers coming out again. I got Brooklyn. Even though I would love to see the Brooklyn Nets win, just just, mm -hmm. just to see it. The most talented trios. Yeah. I'm a LeBron hater. Yes. I don't want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you a LeBron hater, man? I don't like the way he plays. He just bulldozes people, man. I, like, yeah, no, I, I feel it. I feel it. it, it it's it's not the the type yeah. of style that that you like, huh? Yeah, nah, and people try to compare him to Kobe. So I'm like, bro, he's not as good as Kobe. Like, come on now. Yeah, it's different. It's different. So who was your top five all time? Ooh, my top five all time. Mm. Man, I used to not even have MJ like top like three just because I was so like this. Like I was just like, man, MJ, like I, you know. But now nah, I'm, I'm he's up. I've been watching a lot of him, man. And we we got the same birthday, so I low key be hating on him a little bit because we got the <laughs> same birthday. And you know, he be taking all my shine on the birthday. It's the ghost birthday. So mm -hmm. but <laughs> no, nah, I'm, I'm gonna put him up there. I got Kobe. Uh, it's one A, one B with Kobe and Jordan. That's what I have. So, and then, I mean, I gotta throw, I gotta throw Bron, I gotta throw Bron in there as number two, or, or number three. Got you. Cause just cause of his, just cause of his career. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're and, uh, yeah. Are we talking resume? Or are we talking about just my top five talent? Yeah, that's hooper, my skill, ability, all that. Kyrie Irving is the most, I feel like he's the most skilled oh, yeah. player to ever play the game. Definitely. Yeah. His finishing is crazy. Yeah. Uh, Jamal Carper is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Jamal Carper, the most underrated player in my opinion all time. Yeah. Yeah. Jamal Carper, one of my favorites. So what's that? That's, that's, uh, it's four, right? But, uh, yeah. 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 I, I can't, I can't throw them all in my top five for all time, though. I'm tripping, man. Hold on. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Jordan, Kobe, Bron. Uh, I'm gonna go. KD. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yes. And who I'm gonna go? It don't gotta be a big man, right? Nah, it don't gotta be a big man. Man, I don't want. I know Melo will bust anybody's ass. I know that. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> He busted LeBron, Kobe's, Kevin Durant. I'm gonna go Melo. I'm gonna go Melo because if, if y'all really watch his highlights, like, and I'm, everyone's gonna be like, "Oh, on Denver, no, not Denver." New go York. To, yep. When he got to New York, it, real New York, quick, he was tough. Like that, that, like, man, I'm obsessed with somebody who can, like, that pull up game. It, it's different. Uh -huh. Like, I'm obsessed with the pull up. Like, mm -hmm. it's, that's real game. Mm -hmm. In Japan, it's that, crazy. Yeah, that's real game. Like in ones, like nobody's stopping him in ones, man. He's like a big Kobe. Basically. Hey, Kobe. With a, with a better handle. I don't know about the better handle, though. He doesn't have a better handle than Kobe? Uh, I don't think oh. so. Kobe had hey. handle? Kobe had oh, a yeah. slightly more handle than I thought he has better footwork. Like on the post. Kobe had a street ball in him, though. Kobe had, Kobe did not have handle. I mean, Kobe had a little bit, but yeah, a little Kobe did bit. not have handle like that. I mean, he I guess you're right. Than MJ. He I guess you're right, though. MJ. Yeah, because look, yeah. it's 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 over time too. Like Kobe was, like back it was back then when Kobe got drafted. What did he get? Ninety six. Ninety six. Yeah. So it was a little bit more better better handle than Jordan, but it ain't like the handle nowadays. Oh, oh yeah, it's, it's, 
Yeah. It's different. Kobe looked- didn't have handle like that. He was out there. He was out there doing like just between the legs. It's like wasn't like he was hesitating people crazy. No. Nah. nah. Thinking back to that nah. now, yeah, he just drove in to be honest and pulled up. Yeah, and and he'll just put you on his back. Like he, he wasn't really mixing you up like that. Never. True that. True that. Who you think is better, like Kyrie or Allen Iverson, in their primes? Who you taking? Ooh, I thought you was gonna say Steph. Uh, <laughs> that after. Kyrie. Kyrie or AI? Mm, damn. I mean, I feel like Kyrie got more tools because Kyrie can, he got, he's like a little, little Kobe because he can back you down, fade away. Uh, AI was probably just more of a dog though. Like AI would just take you to the back. Like he'll just, he a dog. So. Yeah, I was like 5'10 too. I know, man. That's I know. AI, AI was a dog. Kyrie's more skilled than him, mm-hmm. of course. But so what you say who's who's better, AI or Kyrie? I'm gonna say Ky, I'm gonna say Kyrie. Who's better? Like mm-hmm. better at ball, Kyrie. But AI is still your favorite between uh, AI like, still, yeah. I'd even put him in my top five. Damn, but yeah, <laughs> AI was my favorite. He was my first favorite. Mm-hmm. And then it was T Mag and then Bean. But nah, Kyrie, Kyrie's more skilled than AI, like for sure. Yeah, the, the media, you know try to betray him as a, you know, trying to blame him. And then, you know, I think he's misunderstood, you know. For me, Kyrie. Yeah. Don't get us canceled now. Watch your no, <laughs> just saying, he just, to me, always been the most skilled point guard all the time. And I just feel like, you know, they put Curry over him because the accolades, the rings, the MVPs. But, you know, when exactly. they was, you know, they, Kyrie got the best of Curry. And then, you know, they was going oh, at yeah. it. And you can see it. Uh, when they match up against each other, does Curry guard Kyrie? No, that's Hell Clay. No. Thompson on them. Exactly. You got to put a 6'7 dude on, on Kyrie, 6'2. Like, what does that say? Mm-hmm. And he still gets 40. And he still gets 40. But Kyrie's over there guarding Steph. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of players, so, a lot of players don't guard, you know, the players, the best players, you know. Yeah, they, they, they don't. They don't. But, I mean, he – I don't know. He should. I mean, it shouldn't be 6'7 guarding Kyrie. I mean, damn. <laughs> like they, yeah. they, was, they, was hiding, they was hiding Steph. In, in that series, so I mean, rightfully so. Right. All right. Aaron, you got any more questions you want to? Um... Uh, that's all I really have for today, to be honest. That was a pretty good interview. Uh, thank you, Andre. Oh, man. Yeah, man, it. no problem, bro. It's no problem.